So, so all of these things can change and cause problems, quite frankly. And it takes a really disciplined program or project manager to push back on random change and to control it well and then think through the implications. Human error implies that the human is at fault, that the human made a mistake. So if you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. So if the ultimate client doesn't insist on this in the contract and police it, to be fair, because it's all very well asking for stuff. And again, if anything requires mitigation, the expectation in the standard is that it'll be reported to the PM, the client PM, this is, and that they will have authority. Again, if the client doesn't contract for this, it won't necessarily happen. So if we move on to reporting, we've got two slides on this. It's the contractor shall prepare a report, contains the result. Again, always important, if we don't have that system description, we don't have the context to understand the hazard analysis so that has been done. You should have done your research and found out. We've got to specify it early, which implies that the client has done quite a lot of work to work this all out. However, if you don't do 205 early, you're going to lose an opportunity to influence design and to improve your system requirements. So it's worth doing an initial pass of 205 first, and then the second pass is more about verifying compliance, verifying those as required in cases and looking at emergent stuff, stuff that's emerged, you know, the devil's in the detail, as the saying goes. So looking at tools and techniques, most safety analysis techniques that we use look at single events or single failures only in isolation basic fault tree analysis, event tree analysis. Well, event tree is slightly different and we can think about subsequent failures, but there's lots of basic techniques out there that will really only deal with a single failure at a time. Fire is the absolute classic if you get, um, uh, first of all, the effects of, of fire, um, you know, you've got the fire triangle and then Simultaneous events, a very different issue, and that could be for all sorts of reasons. So, so lots of things that can degrade physical systems, make them brittle. So, or we might have a safety system uh, that has failed, but because we've not called upon it in anger, we don't notice. If we, you know, if we've got an interval, we 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 could presumably we've got to test the system periodically. But maybe we can bring a human in. So another. A classic in the air, air world, we ask, we give pilots instruments uh, in order to uh, uh, tell them what's going on with the airplane. So back to human factors, again, very, very important at, at this level for task 205. Normally in a fault tree, when you've got an AND gate, we assume that those two sub events are independent, but we can use beta factors, they're called to say, okay, and maybe if there's uncertainty on the beta factors, you have to do some sensitivity modeling on the tree with different beta factors. Not that that's ever happened in real life, boys and girls, never, ever, ever. Uh, but also buildings, you know, uh, with you know, complex machinery, big plant where you've got different stuff in different locations. There's also things called particular risk analysis where you think of and these tend to be very unusual things where you think about, well, what if a fan blade breaks in a jet engine? Can the jet engine contain the fan blade failure? So things like that, usually quite unusual things that are, are very domain or industry specific. So we might do the whole system initially 205, one big hexagon, and then we might break down the jigsaw and do some 204 at a more detailed level. But really, if we've got to diversify if we want success. So we need to think about the different purpose and timing of these analyses. If we've done our, our early tasks, we're going to get lots of clues about how much risk is present, both in, in terms of the magnitude of the risk and the complexity of the things that we're dealing with. So clearly, 
we've got a very complex thing with lots of risks where we could you know kill lots of people set requirements or lower down the hierarchy and pass relevant information to the subcontractors because the subcontractors uh if you leave them in isolation they'll do a hazard analysis in isolate um, which is usually not as helpful as it could be you will get uh, synth you know you'll you'll get synthesis and you're going to get a lot more success probably or not much more money and effort and time so that's the end of our session for today just a reminder that i've quoted from the mill standard 882 and for more lessons and more resource please do visit www.safetyartisan.com has an analysis task 205 and it just remains for me to say thanks very much